Our final award. We've got to our final award now. And um, well done also, if I may say so, another quote for the year. The first 80 years are the hardest. Uh, so it's going to be on my screensaver. Uh, our final award. Basically, we thought, what does the world need now? And then we thought of this fellow who's been on television a lot last year and the year before in these marigold-type shows, not about gloves, but about going to India. Uh, he's 90, but he has such va va -voom. The award is for having snap in your celery. Uh, I first became familiar with him about 50 years ago, uh, when I knew, in fact, it was the occasion when I first met Nicholas Parsons, uh, I went to a party hosted by Fanny Craddock. <laughs> Young people don't know who Fanny Craddock is, but uh, she was the Mary Berry of her day. In fact, uh, Fanny Craddock was really more of a, a cross between Mary Berry and Jeremy Clarkson. Um, <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> because she didn't quite have the, the finesse and the delicacy that, uh, that, that Mary has. Uh, but she was, she was splendid. And she was a household name, and I remember the, this was, the year was 1968, and I remember the joke of the year it concerned two people. One was Fanny Craddock, and the other was Lionel Blair, who I'm going to introduce you to in a moment. And the joke was like this. This is the film where the year, the big film of that year was um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And the big joke of that year was, imagine Fanny Craddock and Lionel Blair in a remake called Butch Casserole and the One Dance Kid. <laughs> but Lionel was never somebody for one dance. He was the most versatile choreographer in the business, which is why everybody wanted to work with him. We have had such a happy lunch sitting next to one another, talking about Danny Kaye, Sammy Davis Jr., Fred Astaire, the greats that he knew and has stories to tell. And I remembered Fred Astaire being so important to him, not only because he, like Fred Astaire, was a great dancer, and he, like Fred Astaire, had a sister who was also a dancer, but because when I last did Give Us a Clue back in the 1980s, and Lionel, as you remember, was one of the mainstays of it, it was on the day that Fred Astaire died, and the news came onto the floor of the studio, and uh, Lionel, being quite an emotional person, um, touchy-feely, He's still doing that, still hasn't been arrested, it's extraordinary. Uh, he, he was moved, because if you are a dancer, Fred Astaire was everything, still, still is. is everything. Still is. Still look at those clips, he is extraordinary. And understandably, uh, Lionel was moved to tears. We stopped the filming, and he went to his dressing room, and uh, Michael Parkinson made a few jokes, and uh, it shouldn't take long. And <laughs> the, the floor manager went and uh, got Lionel to come back, and he returned, uh, looking brighter than ever. But sometimes people think that he is actually uh, Tony Blair's dad. It's not so. <laughs> they just sometimes wear similar makeup. Um, but he came with a little touch more pancake around the puffy <laughs> eyes. And he said, I'm so sorry, darlings, the show must go on. And that, when I told that story to this group at the lunch, they said, that's who we want. Someone with va va -voom, someone who at 90 still has snap in their celery, someone who realizes that whatever the world throws at us, the show must go on. Would you please salute our Wonderful man with snap in his celery, Mr. Vavavoom himself, in his 10th decade, the 90-year-old man with flair, the only man in this room who has given his name to the English dictionary because it's Cockney rhyming stang for flares. Are you wearing your Lionel Blairs? It's our winner of the Lionel d'Or himself, <laughs> Mr. Lionel Blair. I'm still crying. <laughs> oh, God, this is so... I can't tell you. I was going to write a speech and everything, but actually the eyes go first, you know? <laughs> well, maybe second. But anyway... <laughs> uh. 
this is such a thrill, I cannot tell you. When I got the news that this was happening, <laughs> excuse me, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. But having been in the business as long as I have and everything, do you know, my sister and I used to leave school and my mother would meet us from school and take us to Manor House tube station and that's where we would shelter during the war, at the beginning of the war. And we would, there was always somebody that played an accordion or something and Joyce and I would entertain the shelterers there. And other stations had heard about it. And they said, we'd love them to come and entertain us. So Joyce and I entertained at different stations during the war. So my first tour was the Piccadilly line. <laughs> but to have this wonderful and to be with such distinguished, wonderful people, I was pantomime. Nicholas was in one of my pantomimes. <laughs> Two of my pantomimes, <laughs> that's right. One of my beautiful dancers, when she was 18, came to audition for me and stayed with me for quite a few years, was a girl called Amanda Barry. Oh. She was one of my dancers. In fact, one of my, ex my dancers is my agent now, Jenny Dunster. And I'm just so thrilled. And when you were talking about people that, are, um, you know, like Jim Davidson met, who was it? J Anne Whittacombe or something? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Margaret Trammell. Margaret Trammell, you know. I, I took over, and I believe had also been an oldie. Terry Wogan did a program for, um, uh, and, and they said, he's going to leave for a week, will you take over? And I said, yeah, what, what was his name? Chris Evans. Chris Evans, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how soon you forget. Yes. And Chris Evans, Danny Baker and I were sitting having lunch after one of the programs and talking about who was the most famous people you'd met. Well, when I was a boy dancer, I did a film called King's Rhapsody with Dame Anne and Eagle. And um, we had to go to Spain, to Barcelona, to rehearse because the choreographer was an American and when we got to England, he could only work here for 10 days. And I got very friendly with Errol Flynn's wife, Patrice, who was in the film. And we got very friendly. And one day, Errol Flynn said to Patrice and I, we're going to see a bullfight. And we went to see a bullfight in Barcelona. And before the bullfight, he took us to a hotel, and I was introduced to Ernest Hemingway. Oh, oh, that's not, oh, that's not bad. Oh. And when I say game set and match, <laughs> <laughs> that was very. Ex yeah, Chris Evans said, "You've won the game," <laughs> and I've, I'm just so thrilled because I'm usually the baby of the company. <laughs> Now I'm not, and but I've had such a wonderful life. Oh God, it's been wonderful. <laughs> it's now, it's still going on. I know. My wife and I, we've been married 52 years this year. I've got three wonderful children and three grandchildren. I can't believe it. <laughs> this is such the most wonderful day I will ever, ever remember. And Giles, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm like that, you know. I just cry. And thank you. You were all so wonderful. And to be here with such distinguished guests 
and such wonderful people, and I'm honoured to have been part of it. God bless you all. gentlemen we thank Bailey Gifford for that marvelous sponsorship we thank all of you for being here uh, Lionel Blair will make himself available on the stairs uh, you may dry his tears and shake his hand you will be shaking the hand of a man who shook the hand of Ernest Hemingway and could have bettered Errol Flynn yeah!